bottom-up processing is a little difficult to explain. How do we take all these unconnected details and start connecting them and seeing them as parts of patterns? How do we learn new patterns in the first place? There are four different theories we're going to discuss that help explain what invisible processes might be happening underneath the hood in order to explain how we do that. The first is distinctive feature theory. Then we'll talk about recognition by components theory then template matching theory, and finally, we'll end with prototype theory. Distinctive features theory is the most simple. It says that we recognize objects based on common features. It's like having a definition for each object based on a checklist of features. So according to this theory, now this is all unconscious processing, so I wouldn't be aware that this is what I'm doing, but according to this theory, somewhere my mind has stored a checklist of which features every letter of the Roman alphabet has that we use in English. So to recognize the letter L, um, I would kind of search my checklist and the letter L might have its definition listed as having a vertical line. And then um, on the bottom, it has uh, a horizontal line intersecting at a right angle. And uh, so those might be features that are checked. Yes, I have the vertical line. So when I go through and try to recognize this letter, if I want to figure out whether it's an L, this theory is saying that unconsciously I'm going through my checklist and I'm saying, does it have that vertical line on the left? Check. Yes. Does it have that horizontal line on the bottom? Check. Are they meeting at a right angle? Check. Or if I'm trying to recognize the letter K, I might do something similar. It's a little harder to describe those features in my head, um, but I would be recognize them, recognizing them by their individual features. According to this theory, it would be very easy for me to mix up the capital letters C and G because G is just sort of like C with a little leg on it. So if I were going through that checklist a little too carelessly in my mind, um, I may not notice Ah, it does have check the little foot on the G. I might just notice the curve and, and recognize it as a C instead. This would also apply to me recognizing some Chinese characters. So these are the characters that I use in my Chinese name when I took a Chinese class once. Now, I don't actually speak that language, but I just started learning it a little bit. Uh, so I might, to recognize the letter, the character K on the left, I might say it has a vertical line across the top. It has a little box on the left, and it has, it has a horizontal line on the top, a little box underneath it on the left, and on the right, a vertical line with just a slight little flick on that tail off to the left and kind of moving upward. I would have the character K. Um, its definition stored in my mind will be a checklist of those features. Does it have the horizontal line on the top? Check. Now, if it didn't, I could say, no, it's definitely not K. I need to start looking somewhere else on my checklist. Same thing for this character Xin on the far right. That means heart. I might easily confuse this character with others that have little dots at the top like this because that's part of its definition on my checklist. On the other hand, recognition by components theory says that instead of recognizing everything by its unique combination of all its individual features, that would have to be a very long checklist in your mind. Instead, maybe we break everything down into just 36 types of chunks that can all be combined together in different ways. This was mostly for recognizing visual objects. So they said it's almost like an alphabet of shapes. There are 36 shapes and everything is made up of combinations of these shapes just like all of our words in English are made up of combinations of letters. So if you learn to recognize the letters, you can learn to recognize the words by building it up from those. This theory could also help me recognize Chinese characters because some of them are uh, built of chunks made of other characters. So the character for good down at the bottom, you can see is actually made up of kind of squished together versions of these first two characters. And I can remember what it means by the combination of these characters that it's made of. The word for good is made of characters that look like the one for woman and the one for child. So when woman and child are together, that is a good thing. So I'm recognizing this by its components that each have kind of a meaning on their own. I'm not just saying, does it have this um, vertical line drawn through this Z shape or whatever. I'm not breaking it down into features like that. So this might explain why humans are pretty fast at recognizing patterns. Distinctive features theory seems like it would take way too long. If you're doing that checklist in the background unconsciously, 
it just seems like that would be a very tedious, long process. Whereas only memorizing 36 shapes and recognizing that everything is made up of those um, would be a lot of a faster process. It's kind of a shortcut. Template matching theory, on the other hand, is kind of a long, tedious one, very similar to distinctive features theory, but even more specific. It's basically saying that every specific thing that we can recognize is stored individually in our minds. If I see a new dog, to recognize it as a dog using bottom-up processing, I would be comparing it to each other picture uh, or image of a dog I had ever seen until I found one that it sort of matched with, and then I would decide it's part of that category. Now, if I've seen thousands and thousands of dogs over my lifetime, even if I'm doing that unconsciously outside of my awareness, it seems like that would take too long, right? Um, computers do recognize things this way though. Fingerprint matching works this way. We would take a fingerprint and put it into the database and the computer checks it against every single fingerprint in the database. It would pull up you know, the first list in the database and go, does our sample look like this? No, it doesn't match. Let's look at our second one. Does it match? Yes or no? Over and over until it finds the match. But a computer can handle those processing steps so much faster than a human that it's not really a problem. Barcodes work the same way. We uh, scan a barcode and it compares that number to every other number in the system until it finds a match to know what the item is. You would have to have an extremely large number of these templates stored, however. So if we were to apply this template matching model to things like reading and handwriting again, I would have to memorize about 80,000 Chinese characters in order to recognize them, according to this view. Um, I would not be recognizing them by their features, by their chunks that are similar to each other, like recognition by components, um, but instead I would have a unique template for every single one. And one of the problems with this theory is that it does not allow for people having different handwriting. So every time I see it, something printed in a different font, a different size, someone else's handwriting, all those types of variability, um, I'm going to recognize that as some kind of unique thing. It will be its own unique template stored away. And this one just does not seem like a very plausible theory because it would take far too long, um, even if we're doing that unconsciously in the background, to search each new sample and compare it to each of the thousands or millions of templates that we might have stored away. Maybe there's a more efficient way of storing things, and that's what prototype theory helps us understand. Prototype theory says that we recognize information we recognize a member of a category based on how similar it is to the typical member of any category. We compare every example to the prototype. So your prototype of a dog is probably going to be like the most sort of average dog to you. And then you would most easily recognize dogs that are similar to that prototype, which might look something like a golden retriever or a lab, at least it does in my head. And then the ones that are least similar to that prototype, like a chihuahua, wiener dog, um, Irish wolfhound, those types of things that are kind of far off from that prototype are going to be, uh, take you longer to recognize. So if my prototype of a bird is something like a robin, if I see an ostrich, I'm going to have a harder time learning as a child that that belongs to the same bird category because it's so different from my prototype. Prototypes can also explain handwriting. So this is a picture of my workbook where I was learning how to write Chinese characters. And prototype theory allows me to recognize the first character here, that's kind of the printed one, as the prototype. And I can recognize each time that I wrote it, it's a, my handwriting's a little messed up, right? None of them look perfectly like the original. I recognize that on average, they look like the original. I recognize that they are similar to that average or prototype. Whereas with template matching theory, it's almost like each one of these that is written slightly differently would be a different character altogether. 